So we're going to cover all of the vault settings that are available to you. So vault it uses an interface and a pawn vault component. There's a few settings on the character itself. For example, it's got the animation set, the trace settings, which we've gone through. Uh, we have covered what the ability system replication mode does. And it gives you its recommendations. If you don't know what this is, just stick to them and you'll be fine. Um, that's about all of what goes in the character. So let's go to the ability, oh, sorry, the vault component. Oh, and just for the record, ability, system, motion, warping. There's nothing here you want to look at. It's all in the vault component. Um, under the ability, we don't need to touch any of that. Okay, so auto release vault input, always. So the first thing I'm going to show you, and this will come up in a different tutorial later, is stat vault hit. So we can see what it's costing us to perform each action. Okay, so auto release vault input. If I put that to never, I can hold down the vault key. So I'm holding vault, and you notice compute vault keeps running. As I'm running around, it keeps running. I'm still holding vault. I'm going to approach this. And look at the counters near the bottom. That's still going. It's done over 1,500 vault checks now. But this means I can hold down the key, and as long as the key is held down, it will do a vault check every tick. And it's not terribly expensive if you just have it for the player. So I'm going to release it now. You'll notice that cost goes away. So just having that for a, the local player, that doesn't cost much. And it's just the local player doing it. So next setting. Oh, and um, there's on success, which means when he vaults, then it releases. Uh, by default, it's only good for one press, for one frame, because that's very cheap and it works for most cases. So now we have the jump key priority. If I go back to the construction script, get max jump height for character. If I plug this in, so he can jump 90 units. If you go to the character movement, changes gravity to 0.5. Now we can jump 180 unit. Move back to one, and of course jump C velocity. If I increase that, it goes up with that too. But it doesn't matter, we can leave it at 90. So what that means is if I, if I approach this and I hit jump, it's just going to vault because it's more than 90 units high. It knows I can't jump onto that surface. Let's have a look at this. It vaults because it's above my jump height. Let's, let's just have a look at his jump height. Very low. But now if I go 85, it jumps instead of vaulting because it knows I can make that jump. So that's just pressing spacebar both times. But even though it will jump instead of vaulting because I can make it, I can press the vault key independently and have it vault anyway. So the jump key priority, select highest point. Now it doesn't factor in your air control. It just assumes you're in the best situation to make that jump. Um, doing anything more than that is just expensive. So the first option is disable vault from jump. It means the jump key doesn't vault. I don't need to show you that. Uh, always vault if possible. So it's not possible to vault. There's nothing to vault. And now it vaults because there's something to vault. So that means jump key is always going to vault if you can vault, and if you can't, it will jump. 
And don't forget, when you're setting this stuff up, use stat volta because some of it costs a little more. Only volt from here. So this one's a little odd. It's just going to jump. But if I press it while I, after jumping, then it will volt. That means when you reach a voltable surface, it will always jump instead of volt. And then you can just volt after jumping at any point. Which actually get pretty nice behavior. It's like um, better than you'd expect. It's a good option. So the next setting is additional volt height. So if I just make it drastic, I set it to 250, which effectively doubles that animation. Then I go play. Well, the FBI came out, it looked weird, but it threw them really high into the air at twice the amount. So if I just make it 100. So yeah, gives that extra height. So maybe your animations are I don't quite get them high enough. I mean, the motion warping would actually fix that. So it's not a real realistic scenario. But maybe you want to give them an extra boost for whatever reason. That's how you do it. And of course, it's, it's the same, but when you're in the air. So, can vault from these states. Uh, the vault component actually doesn't use it. They're just there as a convenience for your character to utilize when it checks can vault, which is an interface function. So if I disable can vault from ground, and I come here, it actually gives me a similar result to the um, only vault from here option, except this would actually stop me from pressing V to vault, unlike that one. Okay, now this is where it gets interesting and potentially expensive. So let's just set this to zero and I'll explain it later. Now we have auto vaulting. And auto vaulting means if it can vault, it will without you pressing any input. We can auto vault if we're walking or falling. So I'm going to go step vault it. And you notice there is a count, well, you know. Auto vault has a cost, so I'm just going to walk up to it. Vault's all on its own. I'm not pressing any additional input. It's just doing it itself. And it's quite nice. It makes the movement feel really fluid. Like, you might discredit this option because, well, it's not entirely performant. However, auto vault only runs for the local player or for the AI. AI have to use it. That's how they vault. But it's a really good option for the local player if it suits your game. Now, it is quite expensive, so let's set this back to 8. So what's going to happen is it's going to tick, um, and it will do a um, auto-vault check. Then for 8 frames, it's not going to do the check. And you'll notice the auto-vault is... I mean, it's not a huge difference actually, but it will be less accurate. For example, if you're falling, you can actually miss a ledge that you would otherwise auto vault if you weren't using that setting. But it is a nice option to have. Very nice. Okay, so the remaining settings are the anti cheat settings. And yeah. That's a different topic. So I have covered the settings in their entirety, I guess, by now, or at least in the future with the remaining tutorials. Um, the one thing that I missed, which should probably in, be in the custom animation section, but I'll just do it now. So with the full body IK, I mentioned that it interpolates the the limb to the location. So if I go click the eye, inherited variables, we get the C variables. Choose FBIK, spandle. So 
There's an interp rate here. This is how fast the full body IP interpolates. I wouldn't go much lower than this because the location changes constantly and it just won't be able to keep up otherwise. Um, 300 will be a bit snappy. Well, you might notice the snappiness, but it probably won't be bad. 500 might just be getting near to the teleporting area that we want to avoid. So that covers the vault setting. Thank you for watching.